Isles support a dense population. Now, this population cannot exist upon the natural products of the country, but gains its livelihood by trading manufactured goods for food and raw materials. To see how this came about, let us examine Britain's economic history. The taking a case... Here, turn it up. I thought this film was going to be about me. All right, then, have it your way. Once upon a time, there was an island, and on it lived Charlie and his wife and son. For many years, for centuries, the island was self-supporting. The farm grew enough food for the whole family. If Charlie needed some luxury that he couldn't make himself, he could always sell a few surplus goods and buy what he needed from abroad. Life went on like this until about 200 years ago, when Charlie started to use machinery to make his goods. take Charlie long to find out that making goods paid better than just farming by itself. And as his prosperity increased, so did the population. It was a time of tremendous expansion for Charlie. was the most go-ahead manufacturer and trader in the world. Being first on the market, he got a good rate of exchange. But now, another thing happened. Charlie was doing so well that he was able to build big engineering works in other countries. Once he had got things working, he was paid the profits in cash or in kind. In the end, he owned quite a lot of property abroad and started up banks and all sorts of other businesses. This made things easier at home. Now, 
poor Charlie only had to work for two-thirds of all his imports. He could pay for the other one-third out of the income from his overseas investments. But while Charlie was resting on his laurels, other countries were getting industrialized. And their exports were beginning to edge on to some of Charlie's markets. But did that worry him? But he was going to be very worried. Two wars were to be fought. Charlie's exports went by the board. His overseas property had to be sold to pay for the war. His ships, which used to bring him in a lot of money, were sunk. The wars ended. Charlie needed to import as much as he had done before but he'd lost his overseas income, which used to pay for a third of these imports. The only thing to do was to get his factory working again and to make up the difference by exporting more goods. He worked very hard and increased his output fourfold. Good going. But there were disappointments in store. The war had laid a lot of countries waste, especially in Europe. There was a world shortage of food and raw materials. Everyone wanted them, and so prices rose. Charlie's business was losing money fast. Things looked bad indeed. Welcome relief was on the way. American aid provided Charlie with part of his imports as a loan or as a gift. But American aid doesn't mean more for Charlie. It only gives him time so that he can prepare to pay his own way in the world. Well, what if I don't? Then this happens. Each time you go out, you'll have less and less and less to sell because each time you'll be able to buy less and less food and raw materials. Once you lose your means of earning your living, your living standard will go. It doesn't have to be like that. No, but it might. Oh, it could just as well work out like this. I'd start by getting organised a bit better. And exporting things other people really want. Some of the things I need can only be got from Canada and the USA. But there's lots of things I could get from other places instead. Pigs from Australia, for instance. Ground nuts from Africa. Marge to you. Food from Europe. And they'd be glad to have the things I export. And 
the best way to cut down on imports is to produce things for ourselves, and especially more food from our own fields.